This video is brought to you by the supporters on Patreon. Hi guys, I'm here with a video showing you how I made the mask for my Blood Moon Katarina cosplay. Katarina is from League of Legends, and the Warbla for the, the armor and props of this cosplay were sponsored by Cosplay Supplies slash Warbla NA. I will have a link to their sites as well as the Warbla in the description box below. They were kind enough to send me a few sheets in exchange for a couple video tutorials and some final photos, so a big thanks to them. In this video, I will just be covering how to make the mask, the horns are a separate video. So for the mask, you will need four millimeter EVA foam, some sort of translucent film. I just used a translucent binder separator. Warbla, of course, two millimeter EVA foam. Primer, I used wood glue and paint primer. I used rust sandable and filler paint primer and rust matte white paint primer. Paint of your choice. I recommend airbrush paint for the horn piece of the mask and any other kind of paint for the rest. Airbrush paint is the only thing that's really going to give you this gradient. However, for the rest it doesn't really matter. I used acrylics and then oil for shading. You'll also need some kind of sealer. I use clear glossy spray paint. You'll need adhesives of your choice. I used both hot glue and contact cement. Some kind of attachment for the back of the mask. I originally used strips of ribbon that I put bobby pins on. However, in the future I plan to add magnets instead. So you'll want to add magnets to your wig and magnets to the back of the mask. You'll need tools like a heat gun, a Dremel, fine and medium grit sandpaper, cutting tools like a box cutter or scissors, painter's tape, and I think that's everything. If I have forgotten anything, there will be a list of all of the materials and tools that I use down in the description box. Down in the description box, you'll also be able to find the templates that I have made for the entire Blood Moon Katarina cosplay. I've listed those on my store Envy and Etsy, so there will be links for both of those down there. And with that, let's get on to the craft. I started by patterning out my template. To do this, I held a folded piece of paper up to my head and drew out a circular guideline to mark about the size I wanted it to be. Then I looked at a reference photo and basically just drew up what I saw. I don't really know how else to explain it. I've been doing this for so long, it's basically second nature at this point. If you want to skip this step or if patterning isn't your thing, I do have the templates available on my store Envy and Etsy. I will note this usually takes a few tries to get right. After each draft is finished, I'll cut it out, hold it up to myself, and make any changes if needed or start all over until I'm happy. Once I was happy with the patterns, it was time to trace them onto the EVA foam and cut those out. I used 4mm EVA foam for the top and bottom layers of the mask and 2mm EVA foam for the thinner details that are on the very top of the mask, which are the moon and circle shapes. I also used box cutters and scissors to cut out these pieces. Remember to cut out the eye holes on the bottom layer of the mask as well. The next step is to sand all the edges. For this I use my Dremel. The goal is to smooth out any rough edges in the areas that you won't be able to reach once the two layers are glued together, and to bevel any edges to match what's shown in reference photos or what you just kind of prefer to do. So I add a slight bevel to the edges of the top layer that will be going along the middle of the mask. These are the edges that are at the bottom of this layer basically. After that, it's time to glue the top layer to the bottom layer. For this, I used contact cement and just followed the instructions on the bottle. Don't worry about trying to line up the edges perfectly. If there's any uneven spots, you can just sand those down later with a Dremel. And by later, I actually mean next, because the next thing that I did was take my Dremel and sand all along the outside edges and the eye holes to make everything smooth and even. I also used it to create the scars that go across the eyes. One side has a scar that stops at the eye and the other side has a scar that goes up and above the eye. Next I glue the moon and circle details that I cut from 2mm EVA foam into place on the mask. Use a reference photo or the template as a placement guide. I use contact cement for this. After that I trace 
the mask out onto a sheet of Warbler Black Art and add a bit of excess around the edges so that there will be some extra Warbler to wrap around the sides as well as underneath the mask a teensy bit just to help with securing it. It's basically the equivalent of seam allowance. Then cut that out. I used scissors for this. Now it's time to wrap the faux mask in Warbla. Heat up the Warbla using a heat gun until it becomes soft and malleable. I work from one end to the other since this is a little bit of a larger piece and just heat up the Warbla as I go. Press and fold the excess Warbla around the edges to the underside of the mask. You'll also want to press the Warbla around the details on top of the mask and into the eye holes opening them back up. I used clay sculpting tools to help with this. If the warbler begins to cool or if you are working in sections like I am, you can just reheat it or heat it as you go. You will just want to be sure to not overheat the EVA foam that is underneath because you risk melting it. A tip is to try and make sure that the airflow from your heat gun is blowing away from both you and the foam when heating the next section of warbler and using quick motions and just taking care to only heat the warbler enough so it becomes malleable and not heat all the way through to the foam. Be sure to wear heat safe gloves as well when working with warbler. I didn't at first because I just, I forget guys. So don't do as I do, do as I say. Basically safety first is what I'm saying. I actually forgot to add the smaller scar that I mentioned earlier to the one eye Intel now, so I quickly heated up that section and pressed it in using sculpting tools. And thanks to the Warbler, that was enough to do the trick. To make the teeth, I took some of the smallest scrap pieces of Warbler that I had, heated them up, and rolled them into a small ball. From there, I started molding them into a tooth shape. If you find it difficult, just heat up the Warbler until it's easier to shape. Like, it should be really easy to mold the Warbler if it's heated up enough. I made a total of four, two smaller ones and two larger ones, and I kind of just eyeballed them to be the shape that I needed. After that, I heated up both the teeth and the mask in the spots where they'd connect to one another and stuck the teeth into place. Werbla sticks to itself very easily when heated, so there was no need for glue. I also heated up the area again after it was already stuck into place and used a sculpting tool to further blend out that seam because I didn't like how harsh that line looked at first. So I just kind of wanted to make it a bit more smoothed out and not as rough looking. It's very similar to working with clay, by the way. Like Warbler is very similar to working with clay. You want to give a bit of a curve to the mask as well. Heat up the mask just enough to make it flexible again and curve it a teeny bit. You can do this with your hands by bending the edges downward or shape it around something like a wig head covered with a thick cloth. While Warbla Black Art is smoother than regular Warbla, there's still a bit of texture to it, but I wanted my pieces to be really smooth. So that meant I had a lot of sanding to do. Once I was happy with the mask, I started hand sanding the entire thing. I used medium grit sandpaper for this. Don't worry about getting it perfectly smooth. The priming steps will help smooth it out even further. Next, I attached one horn that I had sanded separately to the mask. I have an entirely different video already up on my channel on how I made the horn, so if you want to see that, you can go check that out. Anyways, to attach the horns, I carefully heated the base of the horns around the edges and the area of the mask where the horn will attach to. Then I just stuck it into place, and once it was cooled, it was super secure. You can also use sculpting tools on the underside to blend the warbler pieces together a bit more for a bit more added security. 
On to priming. You'll need to prime the mask with three to five layers of wood glue. I did three. Sand after each layer once it has fully dried. I used medium grit sandpaper for the first two layers and fine grit sandpaper for the last one. This will help get the Warbla so much smoother. After that, I applied two layers of rust sandable and filler spray paint primer and I, of course, sanded in between each layer. I used fine grit sandpaper for this. Your warbler should be pretty smooth now and ready for painting. However, I do want to note that if there are any areas that are still pretty bumpy or may have gotten melted a bit or there might be like seam lines showing through that you don't want to show through, simply fill in those areas with a filler material like Bondo's glazing and spot putty, which is what I used. Apply as many layers as needed, sanding after each has fully dried. It's best to do this in between layers of wood glue, but it actually worked out okay when I did it in between layers of the sandable spray paint primer. After that, I primed the piece one final time for painting with a white matte spray paint primer. The next step was to tape off any area that wasn't about to be painted. I decided to start with the gold color, so that meant I needed to tape off any area that wasn't going to be gold. I used painter's tape to cover most of the mask and paper to cover the larger areas. To get into the small areas and around curved edges, I'd lightly press a piece of tape into place, trace around the edge, peel it off, and then cut off following along the line that I just drew on, and then press it firmly back into place. At first I was going to use my airbrush for this, but I was having too much trouble with the metallic paints in my airbrush, so I decided to switch to acrylic for everything but the horn. It took about three layers of gold acrylic paint to get it opaque enough. Remove the tape and seal it with a coat of clear glossy spray paint, then move on to the next color. I painted the red areas next, which is just the entire mask really. I taped off a few areas but didn't do too much since I wasn't working with paints that spray anymore. I was just using regular old acrylic paint. It took about three layers to get the color opaque and once the final layer was dried I removed the tape and sealed everything with another coat of clear glossy spray paint. It's time to airbrush. Airbrushing is really the only way that I know of to get a nice gradient for the horn. However, I'm sure you can still get a similar effect just by using acrylics and blending them very well or even spray paints. Anyways, on to the painting. Tape off the entire mask, well most of it, everything but the horn. I started off with the pink color and applied that at the very tip of the horn. Then I mixed in a bit more red and applied that a bit further down the horn, blending it up into the pink. I mixed in some more red after that and repeated that step just a bit further down the horn. I also applied this color at the base of the horn. Once the color was more on the red side, I started to mix in a bit of yellow to make it more orange. I applied this color below the reddish pink color at the top of the horn and above the reddish pink color at the bottom of the horn. We're working our way towards the lower center of the horn, basically. As you move towards the center, mix in more and more yellow until you have a nice yellowy orange color to apply at the very center. To get a good idea of how the gradient should look, refer to a reference photo. I did two layers of this gradient to help me make sure that the color was really opaque and well blended. Basically, you'll want to go back and forth with the airbrush and various colors, making sure you've blended all of the colors really well. And once you are happy with the gradient, seal everything with a clear coat of glossy spray paint after you remove the tape. After that, it's time for shading. I used oil paint for this. Add black oil paint to any area that needs definition or where a shadow would likely fall. So I added this along any raised edges and in any grooves such as the scars and around any other seams like the base of the horns and the teeth. 
Once I got on a pretty thick layer of oil paint, I blended that out with a fluffy brush. If you ever find that you've added way too much, you can always wipe some away with a rag. That can also help with blending. I also use my fingers to help blend it out as well. Oil paint dries very slowly, like we're talking hours, even days. So you have a long time to work with it. Don't you don't have to worry about like rushing or anything like that. Once you are happy and the paint is finally dried, seal everything with another coat of clear glossy spray paint. I want to note that I did miss a step, which was adding in the bent lines around the mouth area of the mask. This is shown in reference photos, but I forgot to bend the warbla and foam into this shape until after I had already started painting. So instead, I tried to mimic the dimension this gives the mask through shading. It's not perfect, but it'll do and it looked okay in photos. The final step is to add some highlights if you want. I decided for this cosplay I was going to. It makes it look a bit more cartoony, but I like the way that it looks in photos. I also don't mind the cartoony look. To add highlights, I used a very thin brush and white acrylic paint and painted on very thin lines along most of the raised edges. I mostly did this around the eyes and scars. However, I did add a little bit of a highlight to most of the other raised edges as well. I also did this in the areas that were supposed to be bent to help give the illusion of that area being bent. Because again, I didn't bend it. On edges that ran for longer, like around the top and the nose of the mask, I would water down the acrylic paint a little bit and add a more faded and blended highlighted look. I think a pass over with a, an airbrush, like very lightly, or oil paint would have worked even better for this, but I just didn't think about it. Coat everything with one final coat of clear glossy spray paint. The final step is to add your attachment pieces. Originally, I added strips of ribbon across the mask where I could use the clips and bobby pins to pin my mask to my wig, and I just secured those with hot glue. This was okay, but it wasn't great, and in the future, I will be adding magnets to both the wig and mask instead, and that is the method that I recommend. It's way easier to put on and, like, way more convenient. Wait, I lied. Now it's the final step. Add some sort of translucent red-colored film to the back of the mask covering the eye holes. I used binder separators for this and secured those into place with hot glue. I didn't cut them out in any specific shape, just a weird like awkward diamond circular shape that fit around the eyes. And that's it! You should have a completed mask now and this is what it should look like. A big thanks again to Cosplay Supplies for helping make this cosplay happen. I hope you guys found this video helpful and easy enough to follow along with. If you want to see photos of the completed cosplay, I will be posting those over on my Instagram. And with that, I think the video is done. So thanks for watching guys, have a lovely day and bye! Oh my god, I can't get this out. What have I done? Help. I didn't take a single photo with the mask held up to me. Aren't I smart?